Ah, uh, good evening, folks. It's there fix and chill. It must be Monday. And I hope it's warm and dry where you are because down here in the south, it's disgusting weather. It's cold and it's raining. And we're being shot with both barrels around this way. I tell you. Oh, somebody's got an offer on eBay. <laughs> anyway, good evening, folks. Hope you're all well. Sully disappeared. It's noticed. I'm here. Fenris, chat. Hello, Fenris. How are you? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Nice to have you back with us, my friend. Hi, it is. I've got a tip for you, Fenris. Hello. There we go. You What's said, on the, said on the Discord earlier on that you were thinking about doing some commission work. Yeah, yeah. Don't entertain anything unless you've told them how much money you want to pay. Uh, you want them to pay you to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much the the main conclusion I've come yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. I always underprice when I do it. You do it as well, don't you, Sully? Always underprice it, don't we? We spend hours on yeah. the bloody thing. You know what? I think I did one, and it took me about 35 hours. I think it worked out. I charged you like £6 an hour, £5 pound an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you know. And the beauty is when you're using uh, lacquer paints, it dries so quick, you don't have to factor in the drying time so much these days, do you? Yeah. you know? so, Anyway, so on that on that bombshell, on that note, I should say, not bombshell, on that note, we I've been looking at the forums the last couple of weeks, and I've had three emails now asking my advice on airbrushing, and I was wondering what setups we have, and talk about the reasons why. Um, I think on a lot of my videos, you'll notice I'm an, I'm a harder and steam back. Stingbeck uh, airbrusher. I've got an Infinity, but um, I've also got the gallery airbrushes that they sent me to review. I also use a Fender um, airbrush, and I also use a Fender compressor. Um, and would that be a good setup? A Fender? I would recommend a Fender um, or Fenga. I think it is, isn't it? Fenga. 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 But um, I, I, this was recommended to me by Jonathan Mock from the Interesting Modeling Company, oh. um, the FE183K. And they do this as a bundle with a compressor. Yeah. I do not believe an expensive compressor will make you a better airbrusher. I seriously don't. I, no, I buy cheap and nasty compressors. I think you're the same, aren't you, Alex? You don't buy expensive compressors, do you? I have exactly the same compressor. Um, whilst the Fender, yeah, got a little tank on it, it's really quiet, yeah, fantastic, fantastic bit of kit. Um, what about you, John? What do you use? For, uh, oh, go ahead, John. No, John, Alec. talk to me. Oh, no, John, Alec, John, Alec, can I say, yeah. <laughs> what have you got, John, Alec? Too many Johns, <laughs> so, so you, Alec, right? I, I'm primarily, um an Iwata guy, so my main mm -hmm. airbrush is this um, Iwata Eclipse. It's a 0 0.35, um, and this is sort of my workhorse. Um, yeah, for, I have a couple others here. I have a, a Revolution and a Neo. Um, the Neo I use primarily for uh, metals, so I like to have an airbrush that, that this is the only airbrush that metals go through. Um, and I primarily use the, um, the Revolution because it's got a 0.5 needle. I primarily use this for um, uh, painting uh, coats, right? So this is sort of like my car. Uh, this is sort of like my car airbrush. So for uh, top coats and for the, the main coat, uh, this is what I use. And then my fourth one is I have a Harder and Steenbeck um uh, Infinity CR. Uh, oh, you've got the chrome one. That's all it means. It's chrome, isn't it? The CR is chrome. Exactly the same as mine. Yeah. So oh, I just this use this. For I love this. I, I love this. I, you know, I I thought people were taking the piss, but once you've had one of these, I know people will say, oh, "I want a little crab or go eye water," or um, is it Pasha? And it? it's the other one. Yeah. Or um, is it Devil, Dev, Devil Bliss or Devil Bliss? Yeah. There's so many out there, but um, yeah, I, I this is my I love uh, my, this is my air compressor. 
exactly the same as ours, Alex. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, spray gunner. Spray gunner is the manufacturer. Yeah, I absolutely love this thing. It was um, maybe I, I think 125 or something. It's really quiet. Um, yeah, the, the pressure control works great. It just sits right here, and it it just works. It just works beautifully. So I, um, I, just, I love this. One is unplugged. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. This is where he finds some bits that he's lost. Or accidentally unplugs his computer while he's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I've just found that. I, I just found that seat for that bloody <laughs> that <laughs> <Lenny laughs> <Lenny laughs> kit. <laughs> um. Alex, you says, don't laugh. I bought a Spa Max compressor and airbrush. Is it worthwhile? Yeah. 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 Uh, I've got Spa Max compressor. I, th I think I was going to say was when you just showed me yours there, John Alec, was um, um, I think they produce them and they rebadge them like a Hornby 3D <laughs> printer. There's honestly, there is a whole bunch of uh, compressors, mm -hmm. both the tank and the tankless forms that are the exact same that are made out of one manufacturing house and then they just rebrand them across <laughs> the yeah yeah celtic west so we're compressors big and and celtic will know his his onions here because i know the guy and he's he's shit hot with welding and stuff with compressors the bigger the tank the better the air is cooler therefore less wet and the tank nice. gives a large reserve of air the compressor can be filled and turned off very quiet. So yeah, you know, you've got that automatic on off, haven't you? You know, when you lose lose the pressure. Um yeah, I I kind of get that. I I'm trying to think, what's the average? Ten litre? Five litre? On a, it's ten litre, isn't it? The average we see these days. I think that one's a, a five litre. I must say I've got uh, I think it's hundred and twenty five litre um in my garage. Wow. <laughs> And I, yeah, I had a 500 litre, like with a two horsepower compressor, like an old yeah. one. Um, mm. It made absolutely no difference whatsoever. Uh, I also have a direct, um, like, tankless compressor. It makes no mm. difference to the quality of the brushing. No. But I suppose with his cooler air, that should that would affect it, wouldn't it? I suppose. Uh, well, I mean, if you've got a, if you've got a moisture trap, um, yeah, or two. Moisture traps. Mm. The yeah. I've also used a five thousand psi nitrogen tank, um, mm. big five and a half foot thing, uh, which is absolutely silent, obviously, mm. um, which is great for spraying at night because obviously there's no sound. Yeah, <laughs> but um, in terms of and that's absolutely a hundred percent dry. Um, mm. In terms of the actual finish it gives for for us. The main thing is, yeah, if you don't get the like little specks of water, mm. then you, you you're good. So yeah, moisture trap I'd recommend, but otherwise, you you can get away <laughs> with almost anything. Even those little, you know, those handheld ones. You got one, Moss, haven't you? Yeah, little handheld compressor. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, yeah. I take it with me. I I use it. I I, I you know, and I've I've done demonstrations with it at the local model club. Like. You know, I think yeah. they're brilliant. You know, I've got one with a little. I put a quick change um, hose fitting on it, so you don't have to hold it in your hand because that's that's the main thing is that it's heavy. Yeah. But if See, you my, just have it on a hose, it's fine. The only thing you can't do is change the airbrush, and there's a tell you the reason why they constantly run. So and then so what? Because the, they're constantly running, they need to keep forcing air out. That's the problem with them because we were talking about this on um, on diecast modeling because they a couple of them have got them and they were trying to use or find a way of attaching a pipe to it so you set it going and attach a pipe but it I've doesn't it. turn off it pardon i've done it I, but it doesn't got... they burn it out they, they that's the trouble they burn out because yeah. if you actually notice on them the air is always for all you're doing is pulling back for paint it's set at a constant pressure and air is being forced through all the time. Yeah. So if you then put a dual action where you lift up and it stops the air coming through, it burns them out. I must have a slightly different one because mine doesn't yeah. do that. Yeah, because um, if you actually 
the one I've got is, yeah, I don't know what I've done with it. I think it's... Uh, I, don't yeah, I have the same moss. Uh, it, it needs to be constantly blowing air off. Yeah, it needs to be constantly blowing out. Because yeah. if they don't, they, they, they will burn out. Because, yeah. you know... They don't the stop it. a vacuum. Does yours yeah. have rechange, uh, uh, changeable batteries on the bottom? No. Ah, it's a different yeah. one then, because mine, I've got, it's actually got a couple of different, so it's got a, a battery that screws off, which will recharge, yeah. and I've got a couple of those, so each one lasts about 20 minutes. Okay. I've got three, so I can have one while one's charging, and then re so I can always have it. Oh, fair enough. That doesn't force air through all the time. Yeah. That It goes to a set yeah. pressure, Okay. so you can have it like, I don't know, got quick change fittings. And that's great because you can take it everywhere. Yeah, that's it. That was the beauty of it. Um, I'm just trying to find mine now. I put it away somewhere. Now I can't find it. I think I used it on a trip somewhere. But no, as I said, that was the problem with it. Was that once you stopped, once you stop, um, if you try and put a dual action on, because it, you know, there's no tank. Now, you know, like um, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, what I call the nail guy you know the nail ones that um mm. are used they constantly push through <clears throat> yeah because even though you get the pressure kind of you know the, the the tank becomes the pipe if you know what the pipe becomes the tank um but then you've got to keep that air flowing through because if you don't it just it, you know it, it you know the, 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 the wrong you know they so when we push yeah. down we get air Pull back, we get paint. But on the like the one that Plastic Alchemist has got, Nunu's got, yeah, you, it's constantly yeah. working, isn't it? As soon as you switch it on, yeah. air goes through. Wait. Yeah, it doesn't stop. When you push back, it just when the paint comes out. But yeah. once you press it, when you once you start it, it's pushing air straight away out. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one I've got. So and yeah. they, they were trying to do it so they could put a pipe on it and use it. But I said, you can't. You've got to keep that air going because it will just burn out. No, because it doesn't stop yet. <clears throat> they are just, there's no tank. It's just constant pressure. And mm. I think they're very high pressured as well. I reckon that's 30 PSI going through that brush. Mm. Don't yeah, think it's that much. much. Yeah. I would reckon about 18, 12 ish. It's very similar. Feels a lot. I yeah, it's, it's very similar. Yeah. 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 What do you use then, Sully, for your airbrush? What do you use? Um. Well, it's my thing that we, I can't, I'm not sure. It might be the same one as yours. Yeah. I've had to. Clear, I, you all reminded me this chart because I'll monsters need to be cleaned out because it's yeah been gunked up for I don't know how long. Yeah. A lot of the time, I use this cheap ass one. Which was twenty quid off eBay. Yeah, I use that for mostly priming, mostly uh, glossing and stuff. But I do use it for a lot of just general painting as well. Yeah, I find that works as quite well. But I've recently had. I haven't tried the one yet, but I've got the uh, gallery uh, ninety-eight the dual one. That's the, Is that that's, the ace. This one here, the ace. The one yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. One, which I've That's... used on the one, the M21 blog. I have an yeah. issue with it, but I'll give you my issue with it when, when you I, I, I've done that. quite well with that. Which is the one, which one did I do with that recently? Oh, the um, the Kai uh, 61 with the model camo, which I haven't got to hand. Yeah, um, use that absolutely brilliant, it's Tony. Um, that's the one. Uh, yeah. Did really good with that one. Yeah, and which I haven't had a chance to use yet is the the Mobius three. Mobius is That's really good. Yeah, is that the top one? Is it? Yeah, top range yeah. one. The one they have. I got the um, which one do I got? I got the GAD thirty nine, nice. I believe. And I've used this thoroughly. Yes, I have the ninety eight. And yeah. I've used this one thoroughly, and it's quite good. The only complaint I have about it is the weight and um, the ergonomics on the end. But yeah, I, I, mean, I don't like the triggers. I don't like the triggers on any of them. I, the Mobius I think, is a lot better. 
this one here is it it's it's like flicking a bean honestly yeah. it's just it just there's no well, you didn't, no wonder you're doing it wrong because if you <laughs> flick it like that it's, um, it doesn't work it, it, it's Does just it? so it is and then i can't get the bite every time the crowd said yeah. this before i'm there i pull it back and i think after on paper like oh there's the bite there go back pull it back to where i thought the bite was no it's further back or it, it jumps in quicker um i just think it's too loose it's just it's just a bit but you know when you when you where's the affinity gone that one there for the affinity you've got that resistance almost it's like you know that's really nice you know yeah but the the resistance on the infinity and i'm talking about my evolution is yeah. different from the 98 98 is more yeah. stiff so you need to be to adjust your finger to the stiffness of the thing that was the three things i i found with it yeah the trigger is a bit stiff and hard to work mm -hmm. the the ergonomics on the hand and the weight but I started yeah. testing the Mobius, the three point, the not point three Mobius, and it's a whole yeah. different, um, whole different beast, completely yeah. different. Yeah. Fair and I've been using I... that for about six weeks now. Was yeah. that the Mobius? Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, they're supposed to be sending yeah. it to me. I haven't heard, but they did send me the trigger one, which was good. So I like that. I was quite impressed with the trigger, the um, what they call it, the pistol grip one. It's over here. Hang on. Oh. Well, I, was, I, I wanted this one, so we can't send it to you. We haven't got any in stock. Um, then I just one day, um, so they turned up and they sent me this one. Mm. So, which is also a, a 68. Yeah. So that's the 68, is it? Yeah. Yeah. That would feel too much like spraying cars for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't get on with it. They sent they sent me the same one, but I just it just oh, it just freaks me out. Now those, those trigger ones, the the pistol grip ones, are very good for people with arthritis and mobility. Yeah, yeah. Their hands. Yeah. But it takes a lot more getting used to it. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you go great from for great... the flickering from the finger to squeezing, which yeah. the muscle memory is not there. Well, after you have a straight, your muscle, muscle memory is not there, so I had to relearn airbrushing. Yeah. So, was it um, when you got your gallery? Was was it um, LPJ models who said there was something a bit sus about the gallery airbrush leaflet inside? Oh, I've got it here. I've got yes. it here. Yeah. Um, this one. Not one of those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the test sample. The type, but it is it's a printed bloody card, isn't it? Yes, it's printed. It's not a test. It's actual printed. There it is. There's mine. Yeah. The gallery, you know, uh, it's been sprayed. Um, so there might be minor paint residue, but there's no, yeah, you know, I, I haven't got it on the back. They haven't used this to spray. Yeah, it, I, I, mine was the same, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. This but is a printed card. Yeah, was it, it was a printed car. So it looked like it had been yeah. used to spray on, but it hasn't. Mm. So, yeah. So. But it looks like all of us have got these gallery airbrushes. And to be fair, yeah. they're quite reasonably priced. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't got <laughs> a gallery, to be honest. I've got a Fender. you got a Fender. Yeah. They give you that one. And, uh, no, the Fender, the Fender I brought on Amazon, it was 25 quid. And it's, it's been yeah. absolutely brilliant. I was going to say, I've only the Neo, so. <laughs> yeah. I've got three Neos up in the loft. Well, well, I, I, wouldn't, and, uh, I wouldn't swap any of mine for the gallery ones, but they are a good entry level airbrush for good sure. Entry level, yeah. But I wouldn't swap my set, any of my setup for a gallery one. Mm. I think it's a very personal thing, though, in airbrush. It's just yeah. like the, uh, you know, I, I started on a, a Badger 150 copy, not an actual Badger 150, but a copy of one. Um, and I kind of learned everything on that. And it wasn't even yeah. a, a gravity fed one, it was a, a Venturi one. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, oh god, yeah. Well, I started mm. early. So. <laughs> gravity ones were expensive back in the day. Yeah. Um I think it came off eBay or something. So um, but I mean now the availability and price of airbrushes is, is so wide and so variable. Um 
I mean, I've got the Harder and Steam Beck, the Evolution. I don't get on with that at all. I know a lot of people rate it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have great experiences with it. It's not been my experience. I was, I was... Cheap ones. Um, yeah. I like the, the glary ones. Um, I've got, you know, ones from a whole wide range. I think it just really is what your particular yeah. style it's... is, you know, how it feels yeah. in your hand, and very, very personal. I, I was going to say that because I remember you saying that from your live stream. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, my setup goes from the Badger 105 mm. to the Evolution, um, Hard and Steamback Evolution. Can I just and say, from... that, that, that Badger 105 isn't half bad. The trouble is getting parts for it. Yeah, there, there's that. You have to get yeah. from the state. I have yeah. the Evolution, which is absolutely amazing. I love this airbrush. I can do everything from primer to fine lines to everything with it. Um, and when you say that you didn't get onto, I, I don't argue with that because it's whatever you are used to and what you get used to. And I think airbrushing and airbrushes are a very personal thing. What works for me might not work for you. And that's what I keep saying to people because people keep asking me, oh, what pressure do you use? What paint ratio do you use? I use this, but works for me. You need to try and find your, your ground because what works for me might not work for you and it's not a exact science you have the basics and then from the basics you explore to suit you if it makes sense mm. i think that's spot on i can't say any further yeah. than that it's kind of like cars you know yeah. I mean, a car yeah. in its basic form it's the same thing right it's a box with four wheels uh, with a variable number of seats inside but different manufacturers approach it from a different way, you know. Yeah. I like German and Japanese cars. I've not had good experience with Italian and French, and you know, other people will swear by a Peugeot or uh, an Alfa Romeo or whatever, you know. Alfa Romeo, way. You're not a real petrol head until you've owned an Alfa. That's what yeah, you're until saying. you've suffered that pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that bloody <laughs> awful. I even have one that most of you might not have seen yet. This one here. Oh, wow. I love that one. <laughs> this one does double and single action in one airbrush. <laughs> so if you if you twist this part here, either one way or the other, you can do single or double action. And the best part is that to clean it, just take the tip. It's gone. Chuck in the bin, get another one. And so pretty much plastic the needle is as big as this oh, right. so What's I, that I, was, I, I was around when they first came out i've got one as well <laughs> so let's get this right we, we talk about like what is the difference between a single action a double action and a dual action now i'm letting it open here because i've got my theories on it but put it out there What's the difference between a single action, a double action, and a dual action? Well, the single action, you press to come out the paint. Yeah. So you don't push back to, to regulate the air. So whatever pressure you have on the <clears throat> coming out is the pressure that's going to go. So gives you less control on the air. So you need to yeah. control it on the on the compressor. And you only can control the, the paint. Double action... You press down to control your airflow. You mm -hmm. push back to start giving you the, the paint flow. So you can control both with your finger. Yeah. The dual, dual action, I think, is like this one, where you have single action and double action in one airbrush. So you yeah. can do both. Um, if, I'm, if I'm honest, if I'm doing panel lines, most sometimes I, I come to this one. Because when, once you set, set it up to single action, you have a lot more control. Um, yeah. But yeah, all, all depends I, on... I don't know that I've ever heard a differentiation between dual and double action. Because like, like this, yeah. my, uh, the back of the box calls it a dual action. If you go to their website, they call it a double action. Yeah, see, the thing about the... What, I, what my assertions of the double action was, this is what I was told, dual, sorry, dual action is that Sorry, double action judge 
double action is you push down for air and it goes to that one pressure as you push down that the air pressure set then you pull back but a double action is that you can adjust how much you press on the trigger and how much air and pull back on how much paint so you, you balance both oh That's okay but I, I've come to the, I, as I said, I just, that for me, I've, I've heard it said, when I've said, oh, this was a single action because the air is flowing, apparently that doesn't necessarily mean it's a single action. No, I, thought, I don't know. I'm just, you know, it, it's, there's people have different reasons. I'm just, you know, asking the question because I know that with somebody in the chat who will say we're wrong, double action and single action and it's all. Yeah. See, you know, single action from the moment know, that you press the trigger the flow of air is, con is constant there's no variable so as it Why comes from the so I as it comes out from the compressor the airbrush okay agree to disagree on that one um but the single action as you press the the, the button down the flow is constant so there's no yeah. middle there's no uh, how do you say it there's no middle ground either it's on yeah off the air what you control yeah. is the amount of paint that comes out with that air that's when yeah. you start pressing yeah. down yeah <laughs> yeah meaning first step is air second step is fluid hence dual action yeah i yeah. listen you know i just hear you know i've said that you know i've said that this is this is single action because air is constantly flowing through yeah and then you pull back actually there's no plunger this doesn't move up move up or down at all all that does is go back that's all that does is go yeah. back yeah. whereas you know with a with a dual action but you know you push down for the pressure of the air or you know the air that pressure that you want and you pull back and then double action is you can adjust the, the pressure here and then pull back i don't know i'm yeah. just i've heard all different things but I think everybody has a different. I yeah, say, I will say one thing about that: the Alpha Gala, the Alpha, that one there, the Alpha Gallia Ti. I heard that was one of the first um, cars that run on dual fuel, <laughs> petrol in the tank and diesel in the pickup truck. In it, <laughs> 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 it's a beautiful oh, looking car. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful car. Hmm. Yeah, and you get to admire it a lot as you're standing on the road <laughs> when yeah. it doesn't. Move. <laughs> I well, know some yeah, of the Australian yeah. cars you admire them, they rust rust before your eyes. <laughs> mm. Lancia's were like that. Yeah, Lancia Beta. <clears throat> I mean, the definition of, of, of single and dual action for most, um, if you go to like a, a craft or an art uh, place, is that I'm just looking at, at Nigel's bit. Okay. I think he's talking about an external mix there. Um, is that the a single action you basically just press it the air comes out you can't vary the amount of paint it's just you get what you get a dual action you can vary the paint right but yeah you can't vary the pressure nigel why don't you come up i've sent you a link if you want to go up and chat about this you put that the old badger was with the paint nozzle set at 30 degrees to the air nozzle was a single action yeah but that, that's a single action external mix so virtually all airbrushes these days are internal mix mix but if you think mm -hmm. of the old old badges like used to have the the paint nozzle and then the uh, the air bit coming in yeah. where you press and the air would go across and by the ventura effect it would pull the yeah, the yeah. Out. yeah. yeah. like blowing a straw across you know yeah. 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 Exactly. Fair enough. The old badger. Great point. <laughs> like that. On my evolution, if I press lightly, I can use black backflow to mix paint in the cup. If I press harder, I get a full face of paint. A full face full of paint. Yeah. I don't like doing this backflow. Stuff. You shouldn't. I, I it, can, it can damage the airbrush. It can even with the seals. It can push paint up past the cup, yeah. and it can um, get into the uh, the mechanism. Yeah, I do that. 
That's a good question. Yeah. I'm not mm. one. I'm not one using an airbrush. I'm just wondering if it's cost effective, i.e., cost of paint cleaning kit compared to the normal paintbrush methods. Mm. Again, a personal preference, but I would say yes. Yeah. Um, Connor Nige is the man. Is the airbrusher? Connor Nige. Hello. What's your What's your take on dual action, single action, double action? Arse action brushes, you tell me. <laughs> right, sorry, I still on YouTube on on YouTube then. Um I'm totally with Alex. Oh yeah. Should you I, I agree that your your little one you've got with the air constantly going is single action because you just press it down and it works. You know, with, with a normal dual action airbrush, you push down, you just get air, you pull back, you get paint. Yeah. I believe dual action and double action, whatever you call it, is, is the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I've never really seen a difference. You can difference. vary the air pressure for the how much you press down. Unless some airbrushes have a, a, a knob on them, don't need to adjust the oh, air wow. pressure. Yeah. You can keep the compressor at 30 and you can have 10 at the airbrush. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. But isn't that a Mac valve then? Don't they call yeah. that a Mac valve? There's that little thing on the front, isn't it, where you yeah. can turn yeah. the air down? Yeah, there. Yeah. Hmm. That's the, um, this is the Bart Sharp one. But, um, you like that one, don't you? It's all right. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't use it to, um, you know, to try and do, uh, anything fine but it's it's fantastic for priming and stuff you chuck anything through it it's really yeah. good and the other thing is like i said before my little iwata one seal for the plunger was 14.99 a complete seal kit for this with the ptfe seal as well is 2.99 yeah 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 that's the same issue i had with the the evolution is when i um when i damaged the nozzle the replacement nozzle was i mean and it's like five millimeters long if it if it's that yeah um but that was like 30 pounds yeah. uh, and that which is why i originally bought a fender brush because i thought i'm sure i can buy a cheaper airbrush in its entirety and spares and still be cheaper and uh yeah it works fine you know, well, yeah i probably the... wouldn't do you know scribble camouflage on a 170 second afe but you know, I'm not exactly doing that every day. No. But uh, but again, it comes to the question that you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. If you want quality, to... you have to pay it. I just yes. want to say something else. People talk about backflow and you should never do it. Oh my God, it's going to ruin your airbrush. It will not ruin anything because all you're doing is directing the air from flowing out of the airbrush. You're pushing it back up past the needle into the cup. There are no seals. Yeah. Mm. There are no seals between your finger and the atmosphere. So Phil Flory keeps talking about it. Oh, should do it, shouldn't do it. It's absolute garbage. There, it doesn't you can't there, there is actually a seal right paper. here. Sorry? There is a seal on, on the Neo, there is a seal right here. Um, yeah. that I've had to replace it a couple times. Yeah, because um, because I used to do that. And then when I found out that was what was damaging that seal and causing me to get paint all up in here. If you um, do it with that cap on, then yeah. But not if you take well, it no, I actually I actually usually paint without a whole pot. I tend to just use right. enough right there. But um, but yeah, there, there is actually a seal right here on. Uh, but backflow in your airbrush is not going to damage that seal. Oh. I guarantee you. I never had issues with that, to be honest. I have done that all the time. Air will always take yeah. the easiest route. The easiest route there is coming out that big hole at the top. Not going well, to the top. the thing that's dam damaging the seals is the uh, what type of seals they are. Exactly. Exactly. With the, with the airbrush, actually, you know, all and, and also, it's, it's, it's not just going to damage it. It's by pulling your needle back out through it. Yeah, I push always forwards. I always go forwards. You go, you push yeah. your needle in the direction of travel, don't you? So yeah. I was if you pull it back, back the needle yeah. is one of the places that you'll yeah, get where all that paint dry, and pull all that paint and then you'll up. score yep. it through. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I abuse I my. Back. I'm not careful with my airbrushes. I abuse them horribly. I backflow. I don't clean them. I let them dry out. I'm I'm a horrible airbrush owner. I've never managed to get. <laughs> I've managed never managed to get paint back past the the trigger. So. My one of my watches is over twelve years old. 
and I've never replaced a single part. I pull the needle out the back, I push it back through the front. If it's if it's leaking, I push the needle into the nozzle to reseat it. It's like <laughs> some people get so anal about airbrushing. It's like it's it's just a hole with a pin in it. You know, it's mm. like Alex said. <laughs> it's like, it's a hole this one has been with this one has been with me for eleven years now. Yeah. A Badger one hundred five, mm -hmm. a one hundred G, eleven years still going strong. One of my favorite airbrushes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, 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 like I've had this one for about ten years now, so you know, and, and I've had to replace a couple parts on it a couple times, but yeah. All right, it, it, I think everyone is the same in this boat. We all have our idiosyncrasies when we do airbrushing. For instance, you know, I only, I've only, you know, I just whenever I use an airbrush, that last thing I do is brush it through with some brush magic and leave a little bit of IPA in it. Oh, you know, that's what I've always done. Leave IPA in it ready for next time I want to use it then I blow it through blow the IPA through and then start painting again um 0.3 small enough for most things what yeah. are we talking here yeah we're talking yeah. about needles depending, yeah. yeah but depending on the, the the type of job that you want to do on the scale not point three is achievable for most things yes okay. this is I think this is actually a uh, yeah, 0.35, so it's a little bit bigger than that. And I found it to be perfectly fine for anything. Is that on the Neo? Is that on the Neo, not 0.35? Yep, not 0.35. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting, because I, I haven't really seen many 0.35s elsewhere. It's usually 0.3s. But... The 98 is 3.5. The Galeria 98 is 3.5. Okay. Yeah. I watch yeah. 3.5, isn't it? So it's my yeah. Eclipse, yeah. Yeah, which I assume was like American measurements because of the difference in period to metric. That makes a lot of sense. I assume I might be wrong. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. But usually I go from this one is not 0.2, <laughs> it's the smallest I have, mm -hmm. to not 0.5 on this one. What one uh, thing I would say to this modeler is if you want to use Steinle Res primer, 0.3 is not enough. Especially as it gets older, because it thickens up with age, doesn't it? That stuff. I think. I think the best question for us: if you think about using that primer, don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've got the two dots on this one. This is my Harder and Steenbeck. Now, two dots is one point five, isn't it? Uh, I believe is it so. Is it one point five? It's not two, is it? I've it's never seen the two dots. No. Two is one dot, as you can see on here. Why yeah. that, that's the infinity CR. That's the infinity. That's the infinity. But, CR. Oh, I've never seen pops on my needles. Yeah, on the the two dots at the end. I can see that. Should be point. because the not point four is three dots. Not point four is three dots, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What's two dots then? Three point not three point uh, th is it point three five? Is it the two dots? I don't know. I can we can research that. Yeah. Because my really know, I've, put it in the chat. Yeah. My is evolution it? is not point two and not point four. So the uh, not point two right. is one dot. Right. The not point four is three dots. Well that's oh, genuine. Oh, so there's no dots on that at all. No, this is Infinity Hard and Steam Back. They all come yeah. with dots on there. You say Infinity, I thought you meant it was um, a Wesser. No, no, no Wesser, yeah. Infinity. Yeah, yeah. because this like, is the question that we, no one's, you know, we, we're out. If you had the needles, how do you know it was a 3.5 or a 4.5? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's very difficult. You know, I, think it's, it's, I think it's the taper. I think the yeah. larger needle has a shallower taper, I think. Yeah. Uh, I would generally say if you're starting off with airbrushing, a 0.3 is too small. Because uh, the, if you go, I mean, I I don't really see the need to go down to a 0.2. Uh, I've done scribble camouflage, um, you know, tiny, tiny scale of 0.3. Um, when you go down to a, a smaller needle, every time you go down, you are amplifying the potential issues you have. So it's going to be much more likely to clog. You've got to be much more careful with your paint mix, mm -hmm. with drying and all that kind of stuff. And if you're starting out, what you want to do is, let's face it, you're not going to be doing even panel lining and stuff. You're just going to be spraying coats. 
mm. you know so you want to just be able to spray so start with a point four you know mm. yeah and but... then get get the basics down and then you can go to a point three and do your you know fancy stuff but to be honest, yeah. I think point three is a good compromise three, don't they? Yeah. I would say the point three is a good compromise to fine lines and spray it's not yeah. that bad. I think point four is too generic. So you're gonna feel if you try to start learning how to spray lines, you're gonna feel frustrated because you're not achieving that. And if you go with the point three, you can spray large areas, and you still can do fine lines if you wish to do so. That's my take on it. Take a, as a with a pinch of salt, but I think the point three is the best compromise. Point two and point uh, point one five, a bit of overkill for people that are starting. And then you have the issue with this, like I do evolution with the outlaw paints and I get dry tip. I have to thin them down. Really? To suit my yeah, I have to thin thin them down to suit my way of painting. Okay. So this so, one here, it's got two dots, it's a 0 0.2, apparently. So yeah. I've been airbrushing with a 0 0.2 for the past 18 yeah. months. I thought yeah. it was a three. I thought it was a three in here. That just shows you. <laughs> yeah. Ignorance is bliss, isn't it? <laughs> See, though. It is. I thought, yeah. it was a, I thought it was a 3.5 in here, but apparently, Harder and Steenbeck is 0 0.15. You have a 0 0.2. Then you have a 0 0.4. Then you have 0 0.8, 1, and 1 1.2. So if you want, you know, was it 1.2? That must be like a, a, a Chinese, uh, um, what's it called? Not being, not being funny, you can take the needle out for most of it. Well, for a not point, not point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just spray yeah, it out of the needle. I think 99.99% .99 of modelers will never, ever use or need to use anything smaller than the point two. Yeah. Use anything yeah. on the point three. Unless you're speaking, uh, well, I think to nine point nine probably don't need to use um, yeah. anything less than point three. Unless you speak to LPJ models, he uses one point. He uses uh, 0 0.15, 0 0.5. Point point five. Yeah, and he's but again, point zero zero one. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but again, Alex, that goes to the conversation that we were having before. Paint, so he's using very thin paint. Yeah, but all depends what you what you want to do with the airbrush, how much you want to use the airbrush, yeah. and how much suits you to your thing like i'm no brush painter i don't do brush painting all i do is airbrush yeah. everything from wheels even the cockpit just the details on the on the panel i'll do it with the brush everything else is airbrush done so yeah, i need so. control to do so and the smaller the needle the better but i, I do exactly the same um <laughs> I, i've never used or i've never got on with using less than a point three really and i do exactly the same mm. let's see here i, I hand brush so much on it and airbrush <laughs> can, can i ask a question please yeah something in all my years i've never ever known the answer to why do some airbrushes have a slot here so you can then you can loosen the needle what's the point That's a good shout. I, I, oh, I don't know why. I don't know why. So if you want to adjust it this way, no, you wouldn't, because you'd have there, you wouldn't work then, no. would it? The only thing I can think is you could pull the needle back, undo it, and then let it go forward so you can flow I, a needle in the way to clean it out. But well, that's yeah. what you do that, isn't it? You do that to make it move, don't you? Do you know I, I couldn't tell you, Nigel, because the first thing I do when I get an airbrush is take that cap off. But <laughs> can someone tell John yeah, that he's on I, you? I don't spray with that back thing on. No, you not even not even to adjust it like here because I use this quite a lot to change the uh, you know how much of how much yeah, pullback. The, the yeah, yeah. Backstop. I use that all the time. I do. That's great for doing like model camo on a German yeah. aircraft. Yeah, just, just come back the same every time. <clears throat> yeah. no, um, I've always done that by hand. I've never known what that bloody slot is for. It's like, what's the point? <laughs> Aesthetics. So, uh, nice. so, so you can pull the needle back, undo it, and then when you let your trigger forward, you can blow blow thinners through. But then, why not just hold the needle back and put the thinners through? So, if you if you if you it cleans the needle. So, 
um, I, I use it all the time. So you press down and this allows you to just get in there with your finger. And what you do is you just, you pull it back. You don't loosen it. it, it you're, you're, you're manually doing it. Um, and it, it cleans. Yeah, it's supposed to clean the, the stuff. I do it. It really, it seems to help. But if you okay. if you just take that entire piece off the, if the back, you get access straight away. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you talking about... Yeah, I use it. Yeah. John. I'm sorry? Are you talking about clearing blockages whilst you're spraying? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, don't use Vehu paint then. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> Exactly. Or Meg for the matter be. Or Hitaka. Yeah. Or AK third generation. AK. Yeah. <laughs> or anything acrylic. Yes, pretty much, yes. Just go lacquer. <laughs> it looks so good when you paint with Vallejo. Stop, stop, stop the finger here, painting you, and use proper men's paint. the I.O. with that point two needle. If you Maybe. can't fit it with leveling thinners, don't use it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just let, let, let the finger paint... For the kids, use the proper men's paint. That's it. <laughs> skill problem more than anything, in my opinion. Took a bit of a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but but again, but again, it's all about what you can achieve from the paint. I have people that swear by Valero, and they say yep. amazing no, paints. I, I have no problems with it. No clogging tip. No nothing. Flow absolutely perfect. Yep, I can't get on with that's it. That's my case. With um, especially if you use, I, I know I talk about the airbrush thinner a lot, but this this does have both a leveling agent and a um, flow improver in it, and in addition to just being thinner, and it it helps so much with the uh, um, with all of the problems that everybody says about Vallejo. Never have had any of those issues. Oh, the only thing is, you can spray Vallejo fine, and the same with AK and the others. It's how much effort you put into it. And I, and I guess it depends, like Nunu said, what, what do you want to do with your paint? I mean, I kind of struggled because I I started with enamels uh, when I was painting and then went to acrylics and I learned everything myself. So I went through all of those, you know, hard learned lessons. Uh, but the thing is now, I mean, I, I use almost exclusively Outlaw because it's just so easy. You know, I don't have to faff about in the same way. So, yeah, you can make all of these things work, but... Tammy is really easy to spray. Outlaw is even easier to spray. So it's like, yeah, I can spray with Hataka and Vallejo and stuff, but I just, I'm just i just too lazy now. But the yeah. thing is, Alex, you have to bear in mind, for those that don't want to use lacquer paints, hmm. like I use think did not agree. Use Tammy or acrylics. But it's still a, yeah. a lacquer paint, isn't it? Not Tammy. Still, it's, it's a hybrid. Tammy is a hybrid. Not yeah, but it's, it's, it's alcohol. alcohol. It's not alcohol, is it? We call it a lacquer acrylic, don't we? An acrylic that no, has no, alcohol. LP is lacquer. Alcohol. LP is lacquer paint, but the XF and the X is uh, it's acrylic. acrylic. Yeah, yeah. It's it's acrylic with... um um. Uh, it. It, it has a high in alcohol content in the... Like, I, think, I think it's AK Real Color that's the acrylic lacquer. Yes. The AK Real Color is the one, I think. Yeah. And they're, they're also in yeah, does. And uh, the SMS paints, I think they are acrylic lacquer as well. I might be well, wrong. To be fair, almost all paints are acrylic lacquer, right? It's yeah. we're talking about the the salt yeah. medium you're using. Right. Which is the SMS going. are acrylic lacquers as well. The, the Mister Hobby Aqueous. Yeah. You want a paint you can thin with water. That stuff is brilliant. Thins with water yes. sprays beautifully, but it takes forever to dry. And it takes forever to find somewhere that sells it reliably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know um, Humbro paint, acrylic paint, can be thinned down with water. Get out. <laughs> 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 I know somebody who uses Humbro paint through an airbrush. Yeah. They all do can, be used. can be used. <laughs> I asked a question can... I, at Telford. These models you've got here, because a guy was there who does their models, one of you at Telford, he was there. I said, what paint did you use on there? So he said, Tamiya. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. umbral paint through the airbrush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It took me ten times longer, but it's possible. I never yeah. knew you were a masochist, Nini. <laughs> oh, definitely, I mean, definitely, Alex. That was masochism. Yes, I, I, I've I, definitely sprayed these thick folk art paints through an airbrush before for some diorama work. 
Wow. Yeah. Um, definitely encouraged me to go back to doing hand painting for certain things. <laughs> you want to just brought up a point then. I think because I've I've used um, Ravel Aquacolor through an airbrush as well. I think it's all right. It's absolutely fantastic. And if you want to do this test at home, take spray Tamiya with with acrylic thinners, not leveling thinners. Diego, any paint you want, but don't use lacquer thinners. And compare it to the Ravel, and it's the the Ravel takes longer to dry, but it's really tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. VA, you know, you use VA on plastic, you can just rub it off with a piece of paper. But that Ravel yeah. stuff, really good. I it's can easy. barely use Ravel Aquacolor with a brush. Never mind about an airbrush. Oh, it's fantastic for spraying, Alex. It really is. It goes down not, beautiful. Not yeah, that's, got. that's a that, that's that's a good one for a a, a group build, isn't it? The Revel Aqua Challenge. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Sorry, James. That week. Oh, that I'll, I will have to go under the bed and dig all the can, uh, all the things from under the bed. No, man. Let, let them be there. I have jury duty that week. Yeah. Are, and, and are, are we sure that it's not like some of us have um, Revel Aqua Color from Revel Germany and others from Revel USA? Because that might be the. Maybe <laughs> so. Re regardless, Ferris, they are all under the bed in a t in a box. They are there for the past ten years. Have you have you got one there, Fabris, from the USA? Yeah, they're not they're not in a square box, are they? No, I no, I, I I was mainly just making a joke about Revell USA, oh, right. and Revell Germany. I know oh, they, right. that they're now back under the same uh, umbrella company, but they were so separated for so long. I was just low reaching fruit of a joke. <laughs> but as I said, you know, the, the only trouble is, is that the only place I can get Revell Aquacolor in good quantities. Even though I have to mix it for the color that I want, it's Hobbycraft because they've got the full yeah. range in store, mm. including their enamels now. I noticed it's definitely German. Uh, does it, uh, is it? But there, there's a color they do called anthracite number yeah. nine. It is for yeah. colors, it is absolutely perfect. You can thin it with an inch of its life, and you can brush it on, and it and the capillary takes it into the wheel ring. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. She's on all your tires, do you? That anthracite. sheen as well. Mm. That that though, Nigel is exploiting a problem with the binder in the because <laughs> it's not supposed to do that, right? <laughs> well, if you a lot of paints, you thin them within an inch of their life, and they go all grainy, don't they? Yeah. This one doesn't. It, it flows beautifully. Mm. And they've also got their own Ravel thinner. And I don't know if you've got any in the shop, Alex. But no. if you smell it, the Revel, it smells like bloody perfume. It smells really <laughs> sweet. Tell me what it is. <laughs> but like I said, it takes ages to dry. Revel number five. <laughs> that's a good, a good paint. Yes. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. Can I, uh, can I ask a question, which is, it could be coming across from some of the viewers. I'm not sure. If you're new to airbrushing, is it worth just buying a cheap brush, or is it worth spending decent money on a brush? Can I? I'll, I'm going to put my ten pennies worth here. You mm. listen to what other YouTubers are saying. That's what I'd, I. I say the Fender one, Fender one, because it was twenty-two pounds, and you know the quality of it. It's very, very good. I was put onto it by, as I said, Jonathan Mark, who designs the ink house for Airfix. And he's been using his, and also Genesis, his friend Genesis, Jenny. He uses one as well. And to be, to what it is, it ain't half bad. You know, the, yeah. the, 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 what I will say is the difference between this and this, right? This is the infinity, is the finesse. You've got more control from this bad boy. This little, this here, it feels nicer. It works well. This one does get a bit of tip dry. You know, I've got the cast of it's called the pinch clean at the front on this one. Yeah. So every so often, I just do that to clean it and then on I go again. You don't have that with this one, but you can take this off if you want. But between them, it's just a finesse. And also, you try and get by. I've not really come across anyone who does parts for a finger. So that's no. why I, I'm more careful with this one. I can get parts for this one. Oh, you can you can get them, Russ. Can you? I've not seen it. I've not seen a seal kit for one of these yet. If yeah. you can, oh, yeah, I've got got a I can that's study them. Sharp hairbrush. <laughs> I think Bart Sharp put their name on it. I think it's a Bart Sharp. I think Bart Sharp 
are putting their name on a thing to airbrush. You said that in one of your videos. I think they are. I think they yeah. are. But it's like I said, like my shop is two ninety nine, Moss. Take a gamble, you know. Yeah, have a look. financial risk there. Yeah, and if it I got work, three needles, three tips, <clears> and <throat> seals. It was a tenner. Yeah, I mean, it's like you can. I, I would always say get one of those because when you start, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to forget yeah. something. Yeah. You're going to get tip dry. You're going to forget yeah. your airbrush, not clean it out properly. And would you rather do that with something that you spent 22 quid on and get spares for for three quid yeah. or something that costs 30 quid for a new seal? Yeah. And not only that, Alex, that some people go enthusiastic to airbrush, but when they realize that they have to clean it by the end, take needle <laughs> and all the things, people get demotivated and they go, nah, I go back to brush painting. Yeah. If that happens, it's preferable to spend only 20 quid to see if you like it and get like a can of a, a rattle can of air and all those things and see if it is for you. If you like it, if you, uh, you have the dispon disponibility to to do so. And if you like it, then yes, start upgrading the, the airbrush for better results and all that things. But um, definitely, definitely a, a 20 quid airbrush from eBay will be more than enough for you to start with. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what I did with mine. I, I spagly balls that. I think I think it was about under under quid. Uh, com compression two airbrushes. One was one of them nasty plasticky type ones, uh, but the other one was very much similar to uh, that one. Now again, I, this this one's another twenty quid one I picked up, and for donkeys I used that. Mm -hmm. And I I personally think you know. You don't. I upset no new with this the other week, didn't I? I don't think I. I that's fine to me. With a bit of playing around, uh, I had I had two. I got because I bought another one. I had one that was always a zero point two or three, and a five, which that was my basing sort of stuff like primers and and whatnot. And I I'll, I'll still swear by the cheap ass one. And the funny thing is, my fender as well. Right now, at the moment, I've lost the cap for this, so I need to replace it. But the needle I used for this one was three quid off eBay. So I, don't, I didn't, I didn't even bother. I didn't even bother buying an expensive upgrade for it and some cheap O rings because I think I burst uh, done some of those in. This one, this, this is the part. Of the time. So I think it's something that thing there. It's got the adjustable air on the bottom there. It comes with two quick release adapters, an air hose, three different size paint cups, a point two, a point sorry, a point two, a point three, and a point five needle and nozzle, uh, yeah. a washer filter, and it all comes in a box and it's fifty quid. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I gave mine away. Yeah, you could get <laughs> um, the finger tank well, um, quid. Sorry, sorry, Nigel. So I finished. Oh, sorry. I was going to say you can get the <laughs> Defender tanked airbrush uh, compressor. Sorry, with the airbrush, it's like less than a hundred quid, and, yeah. it's a, and it's exactly the same. You get like, three different needles. You get they even give you some inks to like practice with to start with right. and stuff. Yeah, but it's just like, and the thing is, if you upgrade, say you love it and you get on famously with it, and you think, well, I need better, you can buy another one. But you've still got that, and it's not going anywhere. And if you've yeah. got some like you've got some rough paint, or you want to spray metallics, or you want to use something for basing, you know, with craft paint, mm -hmm. use it for that. You're never going to not have it, so it's not wasted money, even if you do upgrade. You know. Yeah. The, the other thing I would say, I recently bent the nozzle on my Awata, and a new nozzle was fifty-five quid, and I found I could get a new Awata for sixty. From Asia, so I bought a new Iwata, and it's nothing like as good as my old one. Yeah. Oh, right. Interesting. So I've looked at it, and I've got a feeling the drilling in the nozzle is slightly off center. But it has, it has paint, you know, when you get paint build up on the tip here, and it mm. sprays, I get that with it. Um, I have to thin paint much more than I normally would to spray with it. Mm. And it's, it's a genuine Iwata, but it's just not as good the the 
the, the feeling I have with airbrushes is like uh, when you change shoes, you are comfortable in that pair of old shoes, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden you have to change for a new pair of shoes. And the first times they are uncomfy and you're like, mm, I don't know. But once you start getting on with it, they start getting comfortable and you adapt to them again and you are good to go. Exactly. And I think airbrushes is the, is the same. I, I was I changed a lot. The very yeah. say the very same thing that the more important yeah. thing is just getting, you know, getting used to the idiosyncrasies yeah. of that of your <clears throat> brush. I was I was spoiled because all my Badger airbrushes I got them on a discount, so all of them are returns from Chesto from ten years ago when I started. So the company I work for works with Chesto. And whenever they got damaged box being returned or whatever, the airbrush is perfectly fine, but the box can, can be sold. So we'll deal doing cost price. So I got all my badger ones at cost price and nice. I got spoiled, to be honest, because I, I when I pick now a 20 quid airbrush, I can notice the difference straight away and I don't get on with it. That's why I got the the Arden Steam back, the evolution, because is closer to the badger than anything else if not better than the badger to be honest mm -hmm. but um, again is what you get used to and like sully he got he gets used to those kind of fair brushes and nothing wrong with it if he gets used if he works along it is what it is doesn't need to be a 200 pounds um airbrush to, to be good all depends on who is working with it you you younger guys you don't know how good you've got it because I can tell you, I can tell you when I was sort of 18, 20 years old and I thought about airbrushing, they were hundreds of pounds. <coughs> I can remember spending an absolute <coughs> bloody badger single action thing I had that was like that. Like Alex said, yeah. it cost a fortune. Yeah. Do you know what? Still got it. That came with it. I've still got it and I keep watching. Okay. I pushed, I pushed it and it then surely the paint out through. Oh, wow. yeah. I had one of these years ago, and I had to buy. We bought this one because it was going cheap on eBay. But I had the Magic Marker, the Super Sixty Three Airbrush from the Bliss, and it's still that's what it looked like. It's you know, you mm -hmm. think the paint would just slip out, but you know, that right. was that was the one. That was the one that everybody if it was. Oh, they had the the one that pumped into a can, like the Humbro thing, you know, with yeah, the, the was awful, you man. know. They still sell that, you know. I know they do. But this was this is the super yeah, super sixty three. This was the Aerograph, and it still works now, and it's a lovely little brush, mm. you know. But I, I I've kept it because I remember having one of these, and I've I think mine was second hand, given down. But um, he, he worships you know, that one at night, I think. Here you go. This one here, yeah. Gadsby, six pound ninety for a new, uh, just the needle. So you must be looking at eighty five, eighty six, maybe a bit later than that. Mm. Yeah, six pound ninety for a needle. Like Nigel said, a lot of the things, you know, I think that Badger one fifty. When I was looking mm. at parts for it, a new one was like 150, 180 pounds. Mm. And this is back in the 90s. So the price, if you think of airbrushes now, decent airbrushes hasn't really changed in terms of the absolute value, the absolute number. But inflation wise, they're vastly cheaper now because 150 pounds, <laughs> you know, 30 years ago was a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question here, lads. Ryan said, question, question. Why would I spend to up spend up two hundred pounds on an airbrush when you can get a cheap one? What's the difference? Once you start working with a two hundred pound airbrush, if you know what what you're doing, you're gonna notice the difference, Ryan. Mm. That's all I can tell you. But if you're a beginner, don't go and buy a two hundred pound airbrush. No. Yes, no. yes, <laughs> that, that's that's yes. Once you know what you're doing and you get a two hundred pound airbrush, you're gonna notice the difference. Or you'll have the biggest disappointment of your life, like I did. Mm. <laughs> mm. Those hurt a lot when they stick in your finger. Wow. <laughs> Another analogy is because um, I, I, I play the bass, and, and so if you're starting out to play the bass, you're it, you're not going to go out and, and buy a Spectre or a Rickenbacker. You're gonna you're gonna get a you know a, a cheap a cheap bass. You're gonna get something that's like maybe you know a hundred bucks or something like that to start to learn because um 
maybe you're just going to put it down. Maybe it's it's just not for you or, or, or what have you. And I think mm -hmm. it's the same with an airbrush. When you start out airbrushing, mm -hmm. you can you can, you know, get one of these cheaper airbrushes and they're going to serve you perfectly fine. Just like a hundred dollar base. Well, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you're going to you're going to play it and, and that. So, yeah. And then, but, might, then yeah. you might think I'd like to get a bit of a finer finish or I'd like to see if I could do finer panel lines or yes uh, maybe yeah. a, a better, yeah. better finish on that car body yeah more. that's when the 200 like, pounds airbrush kicks in yeah. can i just say this that when i was obviously used to do my weathering on low coast and that i got fed up using the aerosol cans because it cost a full cost it costing me a fortune i i can't i i, I asked a someone who did air, did weathering for a living and he said, no, buy, buy this cheap, the cheapest airbrush you can and just practice the hell out of it. Yeah. yeah. This, the, the comment from Stuart Templeton saying that if you don't have an airbrush, you're not a real modeler. I think mm. exactly the opposite. Mm. I take my yeah. hat off to people that brush painting and can get a nice smooth finish with brush painting mm -hmm. than Thank the airbrush. You know, Thank you. Yes, but that's you, that, that's my thing. I was going to say, apart from you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you no. that paint on my cheeks, Kate. My time has come. <laughs> to, to be honest, to be honest, John, right? Because I mean, the advantages of an airbrush are like you can achieve a really nice model finish as a, as a beginner model yeah. using spray cans, right? Mm, yeah. Because spray can will give you a nice finish, and you can mask up and, and do all of that. You can't do fine work but you can produce a really nice model because that's what an airbrush does, right? The atomized paint creates a nice, lovely finish. Mm. So it's easy. Uh, an airbrush speeds things up. It makes it easy to make that, that, that flat coat. So to create a really flat coat using a, a, a standard brush is much, much harder. Oh, I, was yes, gonna, just gonna, I was just about to say, as someone who likes to use a hairy stick, I've never done well with putting a varnish on with a with a hairy stick. I've n I might it right. always used to look terrible. I'll ask I you a question. Do. I'll ask you a question. How long did it take you to paint with an airbrush the Concord you built? Thirty-five minutes. It took me two and a half hours to paint mine. <laughs> <laughs> Almost the same. What did you, what did you think of it? You put the first coat on, and then you have to wait six hours for it to go off. And then you put the second coat on, but you have to use so much thinners to get the paint to lay its own layer. Mm -hmm. And that's what takes the time. It's what did you use? Right what did you use, John? I used enamel. G22. Well, humble enamel. Gloss. Doesn't the second coat lift the first coat? Not if you leave it. At, no, if you if you let it go off for six hours or more. I mean, I left, oh, I left mine overnight. You put the second coat on with thinners, it's about 50%. Mm. And it finds its own layer, and the finish you get is absolutely gorgeous. I've had loads of people say to me, you never brush painted that, and that's been sprayed, but it's, mm. it's not true. And you say, yes, I bloody did. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just the amount of effort you've got to put into it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot of effort, but you can get the finishes. You can get the finish, and to get that finish... Yeah. You have to know what you're doing a lot more That's than right. an airbrush. It's the same with airbrushes, though, isn't it? If you don't know what you're doing with an airbrush, all you'll end up with is a load of crap at the end of the day. But once but, you start learning how to use the airbrush, I mean, I, I did have a finger for Christ a year and a half, and the main issue I had with them, I bought four of them in a row, was cleaning them. I just couldn't clean them. And I think it might be because I was using humble enamels. Yes, yeah, I recently did a test online with different paints, and one of the paints I used was Humber enamel yeah. in leveling thinners. Yeah. And I was gobsmacked at how beautiful that was to paint. And the finish. Yeah, the finish was beautiful. Stunning. Yeah. I did an Airfix 24 right. skill Stuka, right? And I painted the top coat in matte 26 tan with, um, you know, the interior green for the camo, the swirl camo pattern over the top. Yeah, it was gorgeous. I chucked the brush away at the end of the game. Yeah. Couldn't bloody clean it. It just wouldn't come clean. People, <laughs> the thing is, people forget why acrylics became popular, and it wasn't yeah, because that. they were a better finish. It's because they're non-toxic and they're quick. Yeah. yeah. 
That's a very different set of parameters. <laughs> yeah. I was also going to say a lot of people like like Stuart saying there about you know people saying about you're not a proper modder if you if you don't airbrush. A lot of our preferred paints you can't brush. No, you can't. You have true. to airbrush them. Yeah. yeah but I mean, I've, I've been watching. I've been watching Penrith doing the panel lines on that F5. Yeah. And I don't think you could get as good a finish with an airbrush as what he's done. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like, I, I think, down, you know, I, I, time wise, not, not area wise, but I think most of my kits are about 50% brush painted and about 50% yeah. airbrushed. And the only reason, like, you know, time wise, is because obviously you can paint a much larger area faster with yeah. an airbrush. But, yeah. um, like, like, I've gotten comments on my videos about, like, why aren't you airbrushing your, your cockpit? Why are you hand painting the cockpit? It's like, I don't know. It's fine to hand paint it. I mean, can you tell the difference, yeah. or are you just angry that you see a hairy stick in the in the frame? Yeah. You know. I mean, I've and, I've never used a cockpit mask in my life. No, not once. No, I I mean, I'll I'll sometimes do it with with um tape, but I'll just as often just go ahead and yeah. paint them in, especially if it's only like one piece. Yeah. yeah, if something super complex, I'll be more likely to do masks. But if it's yeah. just one piece, you know, one little bar or something, yeah. I'll hand brush that. I mean, the, I, the, I nose, the nose there I was hand brushed on. I think, you know. I think you should paint that BV141 cockpit canopy with a brush. I'll challenge you. No mask, just do it with a brush. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. The satisfaction no. you'll get at the end after uh, honestly, you've been doing no, actually, it for an hour. I can see that working if you just slather the whole thing in the paint and then use the toothpick to clean it up afterwards. That yeah, might well, be easier. Wanted. Yeah, exactly. You just <laughs> so, paint the frame. Just paint the frame, and then when it goes off six, eight hours, just clean it up with a tooth, uh, with um, a cocktail stick. Yep. You can I'm, even sharpen the tip up with a filing brush. It's fine. I'm going to tell you one thing, John. The only satisfaction I would get if I try to do that is a hammer through the canopy because <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't be I, able to, honest to God. I, I, I did it with an FW-189, and it's very satisfying with the end result when you when it's done nice. It's satisfying. This is the new Harder and Steenbeck Ultra, the mm -hmm. new release, right? It's lovely. Right? I've, I've had a go with it. I'm selling it on that. I've done my bit. I'm just going to review on it, but there's been so many reviews on it. Um, if you want to spend some money, this may be worth looking into. Um, you can pick them up for about 90 quid now. When I bought it, it was about £110. Pounds. Um, but I've now put it on my... <clears throat> Vintage, so if somebody wants a cheap one, I think I've got about 70 quid. So if you want a harder and steam back, but what got me was this has got a four point a 0 0.45 needle in it. God. Yeah. But they reckon they can you can do your figures with it. It's designed for figure painters, I think, more than anything. Mm. So but I just like the way they've got the little adjustment here. So there's where the trigger goes. I'm gonna see on the camera here, the trigger goes back there. Your little yeah. notches, and then you can turn that, and it, it gives you different how far you can pull back. So you've got your base, right. your primer, yeah, you've got uh, prime, base, and then one, two, and three on this one. Or you have it that one and put it all the way back to so really flood it, if you know what I mean. But yeah, lovely little airbrush. Um, but yeah, they I think they've thought about it as well. The thing about it was with, with, with the Harden and Steenbeck is that you can get the parts for it. That's what I like about it. Every uh, air, any airbrush shop will have the parts for Harden and Steenbeck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they will. Yeah, they great profits. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I would I'm really tempted to um, pick up um, um, an eye water just for the crack because I got put off because I I, I had one. I had to use a spanner to undo the the nozzle. Yeah. And I sheared mine, bang, gone. And I don't even, I remember, uh, and I never then, with Harden and Steenbeck, is that one finger twist off and the whole lot comes apart, doesn't it? So, and no models on my on my vintage yet, but it's on this week, I've put um, a couple of Ferraris up and I put that Ultra, uh, but I will be putting models up this week. So if you, well, I'll put a link up for that at some point. Can I show you something, Moss? Yeah, go on. This is an Iwata Eclipse HPCS. Okay. This yeah. is my special airbrush I use for car bodies. Yeah. So it gets kept kept in its box. I've unscrewed the end. Okay. And there's the tip. No spanner. 
no spanner. That's what you're worried about, with snap of the tip, wasn't it? Yeah. The tip sits in a little brass ferrule. Mm. The tip sits in a little brass ferrule. That's on a taper that you just push in. So when you want to take the tip out and wash it out or blow it through, you just you don't mm. need a spanner. If you want to take it out, you need a spanner to take it out of the brass ferrule, but there's no need to. Right. That's what I did. And I remember just shearing it right off. I, didn't I don't know how you've managed that because I've never broken one. I've I've sheared the uh, one of my Neo once and it's you know if you tighten it too much at the end there but that one you usually just use the wrench to start it and then I can unscrew by hand yeah. rescrew in by hand and just that tiny little tighten with the wrench but yeah you if know, you, if you off, you, you you don't wanna, get out but yeah well and then with the threads that are left in there you just use use an exacto you put you you know put yeah. the exacto in it yeah. it'll bite in for you and use it like a screwdriver to just reverse it out yeah. as i said i i you know i will i will get an eye watch at some point just well, that's the, that's the revolution the revolution no it's i watch a eclipse hpcs eclipse my, my other one the little one that one you have to use a spanner and that's the revolution. Yeah, don't get the revolution. Yeah. That's yeah. And you know, that's not a bad price, is it? Hundred and um that's interesting. Amazon's got them for 155 pounds. HPCS. Yeah. There's one here uh, for 159 pounds, and it comes with a Fender air hose. <laughs> 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 wow, there you go. Oh, one other thing is that I, I, I assume everybody got the same the quick release on the bottom. You, um, yeah. I've, yeah. I've got yeah. some of that PTFE tape, you know, plumber's tape, pictures, everything, and then I use that. And then, oh, it's going to heat up. Come on, extra long hoses, and that just sits right. and yeah. so easy flick and flip. So yeah so that's something else is a good tip to have is to get get them as well so that's another one and maybe this is just going back to the fact that i only have a single airbrush but i've never felt the need for it um mm. <laughs> but again personal you, preferences right you know i think we need to set up a fund a go fund me to get uh Fenris <laughs> to put the extra airbrushes <laughs> if you've got an old airbrush it's like you know in the raggy doll bin and you want to donate it to Fenris, send it to me and I'll get make sure it gets sent to him. All right. <laughs> Everybody sends their humble and their badger ones that uses a can yeah. to him. Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> People are about these well, the the amazing uh, car in the shoes. And, balls. <laughs> and don't ever buy these quick releases from Amazon for two pounds fifty each. They're no. shockingly shite. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, um, yeah. Spend your money, airbrush the airbrush company. They do a set, um, one of these for about seven quid. Um, and if you pay a ten, you get one with the Mac valve on it. But I did, I, I got rid of the Mac valve on here, it's annoying me. Um, because also the Mac valve, you can't tell how the pressure is. I like looking at the pressure on my dial, yeah. and you can't do that yeah. with uh, a Mac valve. Sometimes you start spray thinking, Why is there no paint coming out? and you're like, Oh. You know, and then you realize it's the Mac valves being knocked and everything. So, but I always buy good ones, don't buy the two quid, three quid yeah. ones for me. They spend seven or eight quid to buy a set. I've um, got cheap ones that came with the bar shop, and they're absolutely fine. Yeah, if, if you grab the airbrush and the hose and do that, it will leak. Yeah, but why would you grab the airbrush and do that? <laughs> but Shout. on that note, I got some from Amazon that are absolutely amazing. I used to have that problem that they would leak if you twist it, and I always have the the airbrush on my desk, sitting on the on the holder, and if the hose would touch the desk, it would start leaking. Although yeah. I got now new ones from Amazon, but they are more than two pounds fifty, which is these ones with the red thing, and they are absolutely amazing. Okay, yeah. they go on, and there's no issue with them at all. No, I, I was just saying on as a, as a you know that I've I've bought cheap before and I've you know I've gone to use the airbrush and the compressor's always going. I'm thinking, what well, it's leaking. I'm always yeah. thinking, you know, and I'm putting some PTFE tape around the the, the mail bit before you screw it in because of that extra seal. So um, yeah, 
it, again, it's the same. It's the same as this whole airbrushing subject, Ron. It's like yeah. if someone goes and buys a cheap airbrush, and it's mm. a, a dodgy one. They're using bloody humble acrylics paint, thinning them with water. Yeah. They've got a bloody can for their compressor. Mm. But they can't get yeah. on with it, and they think they can. <laughs> They probably can. It's just their equipment's a little crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the trouble with buying cheap all the time. It's, it's yeah. I got, buy the best I, they can afford. Buy cheap, buy twice. That's what I, they say. I, yeah, sorry, I, you're right. I, I, I knew somebody who, who said I couldn't afford to buy an airbrush. <laughs> so when I looked at his stash, he had like about 200 models in there. I said, well, yeah. you know, forget buying models. Use that money and save it up. And honestly, for 120 quid, you know, you can look on Amazon now, 120 quid, you can buy a compressor with a tank and a cheap hairbrush they throw in. Um, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I would consider buying uh, a finger compressor and then buy the airbrush separate. And then you can get what you want then. Um, but you can buy... Some, some of them even come with, like, cheap old paints and everything, don't they? You know, on, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, but as I said, you know, it's uh, once you start using an airbrush, you, you, you will develop your own style of technique and you'll find that there are some airbrushes you prefer to use over others. Yep. Um, and then when you get to the point where I know somebody who's got five infinities with every single, um, he's got, um, you know, different sizes, cup sizes, um, and whether he's got marked up primer, Gloss, matte, enamel, you know, he's got them all mixed up, you know, so, he, so each brush he's used, he's got one brush that he only uses enamel for. I think that's a yeah, 0.4, you know. Um, so, so you, you know, you don't want to mix and match, you know. And also, I don't care what anyone says, if you start spraying enamel, they are a nightmare to clean off. They really are. Yeah, People say they're not. I, I struggle to clean mine, especially I'm using these kids. I tend to use a brush when using enamel anyway. I didn't struggle at all. I just use leveling thinners. You, you said you did. Well, the enamels, you use leveling thinners. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Come um, wrong. Spray and bloody silk. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Go to back so, shop. The other thing is, mm. I was going to say, to use John's analogy, you know, of the, um, John Alex, that is, uh, of the guitar stuff, it's just like a lot of people think that buying all the expensive kits at the beginning is going to make them, you know, like mm. if you buy, uh, uh, you know, a vintage Fender Strat and, you know, the best strings and plectrum and stuff, it's not going to make you Jimi Hendrix. You ah. need to put the time in to actually develop the skills. So, yep. you know, it doesn't matter whether you buy cheap or whether you buy mid or whether you buy expensive, you still actually have to put the time in and practice and, you know, Spend a bit of time learning how to thin paints, learning how your airbrush actually works. You know, take it apart, put it back together, clean it. You know, because without those basic skills, you can't build. You can't build on top of it if you don't have any basic skills to start with. Mm -hmm. um, and it might be, you know, don't try and do German scribble camo to start with. Just spray a normal coat. You know, mask it off your splinter camo or something. Um, it's like with most things. You know, you don't start modeling with a mini art kit. You know, get an epic starter kit, you know, build your skills, get your confidence in. Yeah, you know. exactly. Get a hungry old harrier. Having said that, having said that, you're 100% right. But if you take the <clears throat> coin and you go and buy a cheap, shitty Chinese guitar that won't hold its tune. Yeah, that's it. Cheap yeah. Yeah. that keeps stuffing, you'll think you're a shit guitarist. Yeah. You know, so there's there, there's a sweet spot within budget and and quality, right? Like, like there is, but I think the you know the ones we've talked about, you know, the cheapest stuff that you can get today. The I mean, if you bought that kind of stuff back when we started airbrushing, Nigel, it would have been absolute shite, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Whereas now, I think the quality standards, even of the like cheapest stuff, are good enough that you can. You can spray, especially if you're starting with like a 0.4, you know, mm. it's going to be more forgiving to your, you know, new foibles of like, okay, mm. I've not thinned my paint as much as I need to, or I'm using too high a pressure or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think they're forgiving enough for that. I don't think they're going to make it absolutely terrible. 
Um, there is, but yeah. If, if you bought, if you found one, you know, full of crap, and uh, mm. <laughs> you try and use it, yeah. I've seen, not. I have seen an airbrush on on Amazon for about seven pounds. That's wow. got to be pretty bad. Yeah, it's got to be. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, I bought that one for what was it? I think it was sixteen pounds. Jesus! I've still yeah. got it. It looks fine. <laughs> you should go on Timu, mate. Go on Timu and see how cheap they are then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I think if you're buying one for like twenty or thirty quid from Amazon, yeah. it's probably going to be good enough, right? Yes. Yeah. If you're getting one for a five off Timu, probably you're going to, you know, <laughs> yeah. You're probably better spending five pounds on cheap like synthetic brushes. You may as well get a nail at that point. Get a, get a, get a, some straws, dip them in the paint, and you'll have a better shot. <laughs> yeah. The thing with airbrushing is like the evolution on life since you are born. You start crawling, you walk, then you run. Same thing. Start cheap, test it, get to a middle base, and then if you want, bear in mind, I don't run at all because that makes me tired. So <laughs> I stopped on the walking path. You're the wrong audience about running, Nunu. <laughs> oh believe me, Alex. You you saw me. You saw me. I'm the last person likely to run, mate. <laughs> I don't think any of us are going to be winning Olympics, maybe. No. The, the, if I start running, people are going to think that Godzilla is coming around, so they can start running. I, James Willard yeah. just said, "I don't know, Nigel. Jimmy would have made that eighty quid Chinese strat copy sound like nothing yeah. on earth." Yeah. Then Celtic West yeah, replied, I tried a Jimi Hendrix airbrush. Boom! Did they try it left handed though? Mm, that's it. <laughs> or playing it behind their back. <clears throat> yeah. Just turn it upside down, James. Did Timo yeah. do an electric guitar? I don't know. I don't know what they do. Probably. I'll uh, tell you what Timu do do is a what? scale model kit of the SpaceX Dragon rocket, where it's called, the um, Dragon Capsule. Yeah, it's you know, the Chengdu D1 or something it's called, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely it's accurate. Probably. It burns up the first time you launch it. Yeah, that's oh, yep. I mean. <laughs> Starship, that's the one. Starship. That was my trying to get me around. Yeah. But no, I... I yeah, I I'm not gonna lie. I'm been on Timu. I bought the drone this week. There was a drone on there for fifteen oh, quid. Yeah. Drone. I was gonna go over the next one's garden and never come back in it. You know. Have you seen the um, Timu Lego? No. Yeah. That that Titanic is like eight hundred quid on Lego, and Timu have absolutely copied it brick for brick. Apparently, you can use the Lego instructions to build it, and it's hundred pound. Is that it? No, yeah, that's a that's a teamy one. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Honestly, but the trouble is, is that it's not like Lego. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I when I got it, I was like, oh, it's Lego, but I, I don't think you can see the size. It's tiny Lego. Oh yeah. right. Oh yeah. Really I've been seeing tiny. more and more of those coming up lately. Like it's forty-eight scale Lego. It's scale model Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's. See, I'm, I'm not joking. They do I'm micro talking. bricks and mini flat bricks, don't they? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there's all your plates and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Is it coming with airbrush? Let's, let's say to Ryan, a 45 quid airbrush on Amazon is probably very good. Yes, mm. yeah, as long as it's not humbral. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, you know, like. Like we've said to you, that Fender one, I put a link in the chat for you guys. That Fender one for £31, it's 31 quid, comes with three different needles. So Use what comes in it. I haven't changed a needle on this one, I've just kept the one that came with it. Mm -hmm. and, and and you will you, and, and just learn with it, you know, get yourself some. The thing, the thing with Brian, the thing with Brian is that he already have a Fender. The advice I have to wait for him is. Practice, 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 and then yeah. start upgrading. That's that's yeah. the only thing. Yeah. Because Ryan is on my personal Discord and he's been sharing his stuff with us. And again, the, my personal advice for him is be, been always the same: practice with the Fangda, get used to it, get good with it, and then start moving forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. C can so I just say something else? Say with guitaring is that you should play till your fingers bleed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what, whatever you do, don't practice on a piece of paper. 
get a piece of plastic, practice on the piece mm -hmm. of plastic. Because mm -hmm. the results you're going to get on the piece of paper are completely different from the piece of plastic. Yes. And of course, because the paper is going to wick the paint and stuff like that, the paint just isn't going to behave the same way. No. Once it rains. Or use a bit of plaster card. Yep. Why used to use a mule? It was an old matchbox yep. 16. We used to paint that. Oh, God, it must have had about 40 different layers. What, what were you going to say, Nigel? You had to, you, you wanted to say something. I'd just like to say, and please feel free, anyone here, to disagree with me, but I would like to say, if you are new to airbrushing, don't listen to all the rubbish people tell you about. You must mix your paint in a pot. You must mix it 70 30. You must never, ever pour the paint back in the bottle. You must never do this. You must never do that. It's all a load of crap. Mm -hmm. The only thing I disagree with you, Nigel, on that is that if you are a new starter, don't mix it on the airbrush first. Mix on the pot, and then once you get the confidence of knowing the consistency of your paint, then yeah. you can start mixing on the airbrush. Yeah. But the first time still you know the consistency of, of your paint, don't mix it on the airbrush. That's the only it is thing, personally. You generally get shot glasses, which are made of plastic, and if they're using leveling thinner, that they sell for anything hot, they're probably going to dissolve that plastic because it's not very good quality plastic. Oh, to, wait, um, I've, never, I've never mixed externally. I've always mixed in the airbrush, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. I, and I know people like consistency of your paint. Don't do that, my well, God! I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to terrify a bunch. I've never of been able to use so, an airbrush. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to terrify a ton of people because, like as I said earlier, I don't do the the, the back blow to mix my stuff. So that means yeah. once I fill this up, I use my toothpick to get in there, and I know that the splinters, you know, theoretically, if you're too yeah. rough when you're mixing in there, you can break off your splinters then you have wood in there and that's no good and I, like i've had some people have very panicked faces when they saw me mixing in my hairbrush for that just, reason I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say these here and back flush the painting damage the seals but going with a toothpick very aggressively doesn't damage anything <laughs> yeah. yeah well because it's, okay, it's up, it's up, it's up down right here i'm not going into i'm not going in the hole right like, like but, but the takeaway <laughs> no i get it everybody who's watching everybody in the comments is don't listen to anything we've said for the last mm -hmm. hour and a half the, the, no if one thing you're going to listen to is experiment, experiment 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 yeah. experiment with yeah, your brush learn your brush get to feel it do some of the things that you're told not to do and just see how you get yeah. on with it see if you can fix yeah. it you know yeah. don't do that necessarily I just say, I have, unless you're willing to but i've i've never yeah. understood when people say that the paint must be uh, milk consistency i think that's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. I. I. I've, I've never understood that either. It's like I've never understood that. You know. Yeah. That's it. It's, it's like, happened. Oh, they get like milk consistency of milk, and it's like, what? <laughs> what what, what <laughs> are they doing then? Yeah. What kind of milk? Are they skin, skin, skin milk? Semi skin. Skin milk. Yeah. Fat milk. I, 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 don't airbrush milk. Oh, top. Go to top. Yep. Don't. But that's what I mean. You know, they mix it, and then they're like they're dragging it up. Then they, you know, it's got that middle. Yeah, I understand you dip and slide and stays, but remember, it's going down. When you're spraying on a, a mod, it's basically going down flat. So it wouldn't matter if it was gonna, you know. But like I said, you look at the likes of LPJ models. He thins the hell out of his paint, and look yeah. at the results yeah. he gets. I just think his preference. Yep. Um, I, I, I think for the. What works for I you? think to the LPG standards, like I said to you, hot law paints, I thin them with a couple of mm. drops of missile leveling thinner, but I still thin them because if I use them out of the box, they will dry up. Different thicknesses of paint. Mm -hmm. And it's a, there is, there are so, it's such a complex thing. It's like, it's like people say, oh, you fill up a, uh, a Tamiya, you know, get a Tamiya new jar. You fill it up to the brim with thinners and then it's ready. It's like, no, it's not. No. It's like, no. that's your, your, that might be your starting point. You might yeah. then thin that another 50-50. It depends on the color. It depends what type of effect you're going to get. depends what your PSI is, how close you're holding it to the model, how Middle thick size. you're spraying the line. Yeah. It's just, there is no like set standard. It's like this huge four-dimensional curve. Yeah. So explore well, like, it. But, like, but like, I have like, people that do that, Alex, and they swear by it. 
they they buy two pots of paints of time yeah one of them they thin it down for airbrush the other one they keep it for paintbrush and they swear by it they don't touch they go straight from the cup to the airbrush mm -hmm. and they don't do anything that's think. there's no standard formula no that, that's no. what they're used to that's what they've yeah. developed their like particular skill set for and mass muscle memory for if i did it it wouldn't work for me you yep, know same here, exactly. Alex. Exactly. I, it's like, it's like, I watched andy's hobby yeah. headquarters or whatever and yep. you know that's his that's his thing and i've tried it and it was I, and I it, up, um, i'm one know, of those people it, that it worked it, perfectly for you yeah, know exactly. and, and, yeah. it's, and it's, it's just it worked perfectly for my bench i've i've always held that every single bench is different i mean heck how many of us are in completely different climates how many people yeah, yeah. actively think about how much humidity in the air is going to be affecting yeah. their spraying? You know, yeah. like <laughs> I don't think that's exactly what we said. Was it like no? It's it's freaking out about it is the issue. <laughs> no, I always um, my Tamiya LPs. I always feel them, but like Alex said, I never go to the neck, no. which is what people say because. Some yeah. LP paints, I can tell you now, LP12, which is Cure Arsenal Grey, the Yamato, mm. you can thin that sort of 50 50. It's beautiful. Mm. LP34, I think it is, which is a very, very, very light grey. You thin that any more than about 30%, and it's just piss. It just won't cover. No. Mm. It's, yep. uh, actually, find, I don't know about you guys, but I find LP paints, you thin them, you thin them, thin a bit more, and then you've lost it. And mm -hmm. it becomes ink. I, I, even, mm. even within the same brand on colors that are almost the same, I have Insignia White and I have White. And you see I, that I've written on the bottle, it's kind of worn off, but I've written Do Not Thin because this is already so thin. It's already too thin. Mm. They're yeah. both model yeah. air. They should be fine. This one, I, it, it runs like water. You know, it's, 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 yeah, you do, find, you did find, do, I, I, I did find that with the, the AO paints. Mm. But, but, but the, then again, the, um, the White we, still needs it. We we diss a, a humble dropper bottles in paint, right? Saying that the, the consistency is crap. You know, the, like you never thin down the red because the red's pretty good, but you thin down all the other ones, or you, you know, it needs to be a bit thicker. The layer is exactly the same when it comes to the model air. It's mm. so it's so hit and miss. Mm -hmm. It's a the orange dropper bottles. You know what I mean? You know. yeah, the thing is, we, we've not even touched on paints. It's just like, like yeah. the same brand, different colors. If you look at actual how paints are made, mm. different colors get ground to different pigment dent like particle sizes. And yep. they're, they're not yeah. one particle size, it's a broad range. Like John said, with metallics, metallics have little, there's two ways, either little metal pieces or little mica flakes in there, which mm. are much, much bigger than pigment particles so mm -hmm. it's just it's such a complex thing so there's no kind of like set of rules I actually have some, um, like you must do this because it won't work for everything even in one brand I, and I, I have some makeup powders that i've added <laughs> and sprayed out of my airbrush before but you've got to definitely thin it down more than you did before but at the same time it's the same thing in theory as a metallic paint which doesn't need as much thinning you know Again, that brings back to the to the beginning. You can offer a generic advice, and then you have to make it work for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Same thing as what pressure do you use? I don't know. I, I've been waiting for that to be brought up because <laughs> yeah. I'm that, pretty certain that everybody here would be shocked if they found you, out what pressure I usually shoot at. <laughs> now you you probably should be on twenty odd psi to thirty to spray Valero. You should be around that. Yeah, I'm I'm usually I'm either spraying at 38 or I'm spraying at 12. Yeah, those are the two yeah. numbers I use. Wow. I don't use numbers. I just <laughs> price the the, well, you're, the trigger. You're 12, you, Alex, you're more than 1215, do you? Yeah, 12, 12 to 18 ish. Yeah, I, I'm normally I never look to. <clears throat> yeah, but I never look to the dial. I just go there, turn the knob. Press, yeah, yeah, works. That's fine. Yeah. What's yeah. that, Nigel? I've drawn two lines on my pressure gauge, one at 13, one at 20. So if you just look yeah. down and just quickly yeah. change it. And also another good thing, guys, for the new mm -hmm. down there, don't set your pressure gauge to 20 PSI and then think you're going to get 20 PSI because when you push mm -hmm. the trigger down, it often drops off, yep. Yep. especially yep. if you don't have a tank. Yep. Take and if you do have a tank, for God's sake, drain it. 
Otherwise, yeah. it fills yeah. up with rust. Yeah. 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 Yes. But make sure it's empty before you drink. I have done that. It's, it's not pretty. <laughs> you only do it once. But that, whatever the thing is, I actually charge it up before I drain it, and then it blows all the shit out. Yeah. But but if you do it on top of your desk, you get a real a real rust a effect. Real nice brown effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, a, a proper rust effect. It's not. It's not even. Actually, yeah. If you drain it into like an old takeaway container and then let it evaporate, you've got great dust weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's pigment. Is that I, actually, seriously, actually, doesn't that? Yeah, well, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a car modeler who, who does do that specifically to get rust for some of his rusty effects on his cars. I forget his YouTube channel name now, but yeah, I've, I've seen people legitimately doing that. Yeah. yeah. I would just like to point out why, over all these years, when they meet these air tanks why they don't put a non-corrosive finish on the inside of them cost yeah Probably. no because then they will last forever and there will not be able to be made yeah. in the future <laughs> that, you know yeah i get but that's the one thing that destroys the tank is the you know the, the rust inside and you think to yourself and it doesn't take long for water to to make to you know to make my metal rusty, does it? So I don't understand why they just don't put some sort of coating on the inside. Well, and to Fenris's point, it makes a big difference what like atmosphere you're in. Like in Florida, it's like because if you think a compressor is just taking the air around you and squashing it. So if you've got yeah. more water in your air, it's gonna squash more water in there. So it's and gonna get more water in it more quickly if you spray in the winter compared to the summer. I am convinced that that is also I've noticed that people that tend to have okay to no problems with Vallejo tend to live in human climates. You I am said convinced. that that's like much dream, yeah. Yep. I'm I'm convinced that that is one of the big differences. Yeah. Vallejo must really suck in Australia. Yeah. That's why it's that really on my bench. I hate the stuff. I love it. Yeah. I can't stand it for spraying. No, spraying now is, is a big no no. It's like James has told me in the past thin it to death, you know, with all the, the, yeah. the thinners and the bloody retarders and all that. No, all you need is airbrush cleaner. Just grab yeah. a bottle of that or pour it in and spray it. Why so, not? If you use airbrush cleaner, you can use um, Mr. Lev Leveling Filter. <laughs> The worst thing is their uh, primer, Vallejo primer. Mm. Oh, that is just the worst. It's not. Even, I'm not going to call it a paint. <laughs> you know, that is the plastic <laughs> thing that Ross was on about because you can spray it <laughs> off. That yeah. is crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So. That, that's why it's like almost full. <laughs> yeah. It, well, see, it it says it says to do uh, one to one to two drops of this per ten drops of paint. But what I found is, if it's an air, you do one drop for ten drops. If it's if it's a um, model color or game color, it is one for five. And if it's a primer, it's one for every three drops of primer. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just that when the bottle of paint's two years old. It's just a surfactant. I mean, you can. I think it's flow improver. It, it is flow improver. It has a leveling yeah. agent and it has um, a drying retardant. Cool. I have. Um, Does it come with a pack of the paracetamol? Hmm. How could you? <laughs> how, that's a good question, actually. How would you test if your pressure gauges are correct on your airbrush on your yeah. um, compressor? I think that goes to Nunu's point about like not looking yeah. at numbers and yeah. just going yeah. by feel because I don't think they're very well calibrated. Yeah, I, think yeah, I was going to say when, when I say the twelve no, and the thirty-eight. I know it as the 12 and 38 according to my gauge, but unless I like, like we, because my one of the previous places I worked at, we used to have um, drop in lines for air um, airlines all over the bay because you know we used all sorts of tools and everything, and we would almost weekly have to recalibrate those those um, uh, the gauges that we had, and it was it was a whole process. Yeah, I I would be shocked if anybody had a completely accurate gauge on their um, airbrush uh, or on their compressor. If you and have the right hope. airbrush flow improver, yeah. So the, company that makes, the company that makes paint specifically for airbrushing, which is called Model Air, makes this. 
Mm -hmm. And some of that, some of their flow improver is in the um, in their their thinner. It's it's part yeah. of the uh, composite. But why are they doing that though? Why have, why haven't they got that flow improver in their paint already? No, yeah. that's what I'm asking, isn't it? Because, because they, they make some more money. Environment they're painting. People are painting. Because <laughs> yeah. then they can sell two products. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's bollocks, a... isn't it? Yeah. R Ryan is making a very relevant question again. Is Vallejo primer any good? No. Indeed it is to fill your bin. I, you know I, Perfect to be there. I I, agree. I, I do like their primer, especially their um their their uh light ghost gray is better than their normal light ghost gray. I think, in my opinion, this this works better as a paint. Can than... you can you sand it? I don't know. I don't sand. <laughs> if I keep if but I can you, avoid sanding, I do you can peel it off. Like a micro Ryan, if you want to have some fun, spray some Vehu primer down. Don't put it in your airbrush because it's like cottage cheese. Brush some on something, let it dry, and then you can have fun just rolling it off and peel it all up. Yeah. You, but you, you can peel it. There's no need to sand because you can peel it. Just Yeah. The <laughs> thing is, Vallejo primer, I think, is primarily designed for miniature painters. I yes, don't yeah. think it's designed for scale model painters. No. I, don't, I believe that. And the other thing that with it is like Fenris has the little bottles there. It's okay, okay for miniature priming, like when you first use it. But try to use it all at once because as soon as you've got any air in that bottle at all, it starts to clot. I found, oh, yeah. and then it's just an absolute nightmare. The blockages yeah. I've had with primer from Vallejo are just. I just think maybe, maybe it's maybe it's terrible. that that atmospheric thing because I've I've not noticed that, but you know. Another one is the Viejo metallic paint. Now, if you want to go and look back through my library, I did this about three years ago, and I was checking testing all the different metallic paints, all straight on plastic and on primer and everything. This was about three years ago. Look, it's still not dry. Which, uh, which, which, uh... I contacted Viejo and they said the bottle must have got cold in transportation. Yeah. That, so but got... if you remember, that happened with the AK metallic line when they came out first. The AK Extreme Metal, the first patch was like that. So, does that mean you can't sell Vallejo in Norway? <laughs> More than likely, yeah. Now, was that, when you say that that was um, the uh, metal, was that their metal colors? Was that their model or model air that were the metallic? The, or was it their metal color? color it was, Femris. This one? Okay. The, so I will say the metal color, the other thing I found is these are also so thin. Like if I try to brush paint these, they will wick up, like uh, against gravity, they will wick up a 90 degree wall. Like I have to be yeah. super careful or otherwise they will, they will move over and start to... Um, uh, cover other paints that I've done before. So, having said that, I think the Viejo mm -hmm. Model Air Silver and Steel, or Aluminium and Steel, are the best brushable silver paints money could buy. I agree with that. Amazing. What's that? Sorry, Nigel. Viejo, these, these two here, number 065 and 062, Viejo Model Air Aluminium and Aluminium and Steel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're a car modeler and you want to do like shock absorber or mm. you know, okay, yeah. uh, something silver, a pipe on an aircraft undercarriage leg or something, they are amazing. Yeah. yeah, once once I get done with these, I'm going back to those because those were the ones I used to use. In fact, this was painted with those. Um yeah. and I um you know, these are fine, but as I said, they're they're really thin. And once I'm once I'm done with these, I'm gonna go back to those because those are just mm. fantastic. Can I, I just, just say that um, sure. the only model color I've got is the burnt iron one, which I thought was really good. Right. I thought that was a good one, but it dried yeah. right with it, so maybe that's what it was. But it does smell like milk. Somebody says it's milk. <laughs> it smells like Some yeah. skin. <laughs> and Phil, there will be pressure drops being taken airbrush. Depends on length of hose and water traps in place. So do not rely on the gauge to be exact. How much this matters is debatable. Yeah. So yeah. You know, but yeah. So that's true as well. You're quite right. The aqua metallic paints from Ravel are very good as well. I've heard people say that as well. 
Mm. Um, oh, ultimately, so the only I'm, I'm, I'm going to give Vallejo the nod. Then, um, is it model color range for if you're doing figures and stuff? It's pretty yeah. good. Do you well, want to use it for? Yeah. Model color and they have game color. So so game color and game air are their ranges for um for board gaming, and they're meant to be much more resilient to being handled. Um and <laughs> they are. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it myself, but yeah. My favorite line from them is the mecha color, but it's much because it it, it has the same durability, but it paints as easily as the model I've not seen air that. stuff. They, you don't see them very often, and they're not a very big range, and that's because they were designed specifically with Gunpla in mind. Because um, Gundam okay. models are a different type of plastic that don't take. I forgive the cat; he's been going nuts outside my office. Um, but uh, they don't take paint very, very nicely, very easily, immediately without using primers, surfacers, and whatnot. And so this line was designed to be able to just go straight on the bare plastic without use for primer. Um, I just okay. wish they made more colors out of it because it, it's yeah. fantastic. It's really good because generally Vallejo paint doesn't stick to plastic very well at all. It doesn't. No, I was just about to say that it's not it, unless they have designed it like the like the, the game ones. Is it? You know, yeah. I, I see a lot of people I, using it. I sure. I, mean, I, I know just the game in the mic, yeah. yeah, came out to fight the Green Stuff World uh, paint because Green Stuff World was has a, a very big range of those paints and i think that valero got into it just to fight at once but i might be wrong but where we where we have a model club the the guy does war game in that and he's got the every single vallejo paint you can think of there and the model is of it absolutely love it mm. it is what he used to do isn't it you know yeah what he used to valero to brush painting they are absolutely amazing they are tough, they brush well, and they go well. Mm. Airbrush, no way in heck. So good. Yeah, well, I get that. But again, get my that. personal experience. Yeah. I might each one to their own. C Citadel, is a, to, to Stuart's comment there, Citadel is another one that, um, again, that was actually where I kind of started when I really got into painting because, again, I used to do 40K and all that. My main issue with Citadel is is they take so much more thinning if you're going to use them in an airbrush yeah. and well, also i hate these they're also the most expensive paints you can possibly buy mm. yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. well here's the thing though if you were to take it per ounce and thin it out to the point at which it's airbrush ready it's not that much more expensive than just a vallejo and ak you know all those but you have to, again going back to you have to work to get it that thin is it really worth the effort to do that but on top of that if i ever want to mix a color these paint pots are the worst thing ever to try to get paint out of or put paint back in if I have excess. Well, that's, bottle, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Citadel paint range. They, they do it on purpose. They don't want you to take the paint out and mix it. That's the problem. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And they Dropper also want you to spill it because they are the easiest things to spill. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and and with Dropper bottles, they can count how many drops I'm doing. And... Yeah. And they this is the thing that gets this. You say that you you hit the spot there. I I know you don't do it, but the amount of times, even in a bloody holder, I've had to buy mm. another bottle of Michael Set and Microsoft because mm. they're so tall and you put your brush in and bang, it's gone. Oh fuck's sake! You know, all over yep. the desk. Yep. You know, I will tell you what is mm. really. I should turn around and look at your stars. Their, their washes are hands down the best acrylic washes, though. I will say that. I, yeah. I do love Citadel washes. That's what I you know regularly do use. They're not cheap, though, are they? They are expensive. Aren't they, they games they, workshop? They are relatively expensive, yeah. For what they are, yeah. Games workshop. Um, it's just the stuff that you, uh, that you paint them, or, or, or that you're using them to paint, right? The, the Warhammer mm. stuff is that's so that's small, so yeah. expensive, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean, like, I'm I'm more and more now um, making my own washes out of um out of Vallejo paint because it's just cheaper. <laughs> yeah, that's it. To be fair, well, there you go. Gamer oh. channels use uh, Vallejo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if you look at Miniac and um, Squidmore in particular, they 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 bear, you barely ever see them using the um, Citadel stuff. Yeah, yeah, they use a lot of Vallejo. Yeah. 
Anyway, again, folks, miniatures are one of those things that I don't know that I would ever take an airbrush to. Like that's that's not a subject that I generally airbrush. That's something I'm gonna hairy stick the whole way. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, anyway, this, folks, come up the clock. We got enough. Right, we'll carry on then. You got anything else to say, Nunu? Carry on. No, just Celtic wise, saying that use um, a white palette to brushing, so no spills. It, that's a good solution as well. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. Yeah, good on wet. See, I don't see a lot of monsters use wet palettes. Yeah, I, I have. Oh. I have a new tool that just came in today that might be interesting for that. I'll share with you guys later. But yeah, yeah. I have something yeah. to review on that on that front. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, figure painting is essential, isn't it, to have a palette? Yeah. 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 Definitely. I think it's something that's yeah. heavily um, it, that we should use, especially if you're doing figure painting. <laughs> we could do another session on it, Moss. Mine is, yeah. mine is here. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. I use I use two P coins in the corners to stop it getting any mold. And then someone said to me, make sure you use two P two P coins before nineteen eighty seven or something. And after that, they're made of steel. An auction yeah. house, right? People buy pre 1980s bronze, uh, you know, pe pennies and that because yeah. it is pure, it is pure copper. Yeah, and the yeah, newest they're, stuff they're is, worth, I think yeah. they're worth more than their face value, aren't they? That's right, yeah. yeah One pound yeah. copper piece is worth about two pence, isn't it? In copper, two pence, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to nice to wear myself 10p tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, folks, we're going to call it a night tonight. Thanks all for watching. Uh, thanks yeah. for you all to come and jump on. It's been really good. It's good debate actually about airbrushing. Mm -hmm. um, too good. We had two good ones, now, haven't we? So, uh, yeah, yeah. and, and the most massive. amazing thing, we agree to disagree with all these yeah. things, which <laughs> yeah. is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And remember, don't yeah, listen see. to it. <laughs> yeah. Ignore it. Yeah. This guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He only uses a single airbrush. That guy. <laughs> if you want to use an airbrush that looks like a pistol, just go out and buy one. Exactly. <laughs> what, what is an airbrush? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's to the hairy stick, you know. <laughs> anyway, thanks all for joining us this evening, and we'll be back next Monday. Have a good rest of your week, folks, and bye bye. Bye bye.